Hey guys, welcome back. Mars has been in the news lately because we're approaching opposition, and of course my timing is perfect. I have just taken down my SCT and switched the imaging equipment over to my wide-angle 81mm refractor. And so now I'm wondering what with opposition being here, should I take the SCT out doing some imaging on Mars? What's the big deal with opposition? Let's take a look. All right, so what is opposition? I think you probably, if you're watching this, you probably already know what opposition is. But I'm going to define some simplifying assumptions here so that we have this going forward in some of the little calculations we're going to do. Uh, first of all, we have the sun, of course. I'm going to assume that the Earth's orbit and Mars' orbit are both circular and centered at, on the sun, which is obviously not quite correct. But then uh, we'll put the Earth at 150 million kilometers away from the sun. That'll be its orbital radius. And as of the 2020 opposition, Mars is about 62 million kilometers away from Earth. And that occurred back on the 13th of October. So for the purpose of the calculations I'm going to do here, the opposition distance is simply going to be added to the Earth's orbital radius to get to Mars' orbital radius of 212 million kilometers. The minimum distance to, to Mars right now is 62 million kilometers. From an imaging perspective, what is the maximum distance to Mars? Well, physically, at least according to this simple model, Mars can be as much as 362 million kilometers away. However, we can't really see Mars because the sun is right in the way, and so naturally if you're looking up towards Mars, you're looking through the sun. So you're not going to see Mars when it's at its farthest point. Now, if we were to wait and say we had an observer near the equator on Earth and we waited till Mars was right at the equator, just coming up, Mars rise just right over the horizon, and we waited one hour after sunset, the earliest time we could see Mars is when we achieved this kind of configuration. And yeah, you might be able to see Mars on the horizon, but you probably wouldn't want to image Mars because it's looking through a lot of, a lot of atmosphere. Keeping on with this very simplified version, if we wait till Mars is about 30 degrees above the horizon, then Mars is about 290 million kilometers away from the Earth, probably at its at a time when we might want to actually start imaging Mars. And 290 kilometers is quite a bit when you compare it to the 62 million kilometers that we're at right now. So how does distance between Earth and Mars affect what our images look like. In my case, when I'm doing planetary imaging, I'm using the ZWO ASI 120MC. It has a small sensor, but that's okay. These are small targets, and the pixel size is, is 3.75 micrometers uh, square. And I'm using my SCT C9.25 along with a 2 times Barlow uh, magnification lens. And that brings my effective focal length up to about 4,500 millimeters. If I want to extend this model out to the distance of Mars, a very large distance D away from the, the imaging pixel here on Earth, how big is that imaging pixel when we map it onto the surface of Mars? And in particular, right now with Mars at opposition, we just take the distance, the opposition distance of 62 million kilometers divided by the focal length watch your units, and multiply by the uh, pixel size of 3.75 to scale this linearly, scale this pixel size up to what it would be a distance d, or a long distance d, away from the Earth. And we find out that the pixel, which started out as a meager 3.75 micrometers on Earth, is now 52 kilometers wide on Mars at opposition. In other words, given Mars diameter, that's about 130 pixels I can get across the diameter of Mars if I were to start imaging today at opt opposition. What we're really interested in is how many pixels of our imaging camera will have a piece of Mars in it. And of course, for that, we want to look at the visible disk of Mars, pi times the diameter of Mars squared divided by 4 divided by our W squared, our pixel size squared mapped onto the surface of Mars. And that gives us about 14,000 pixels of this imaging sensor in the ZWO ASI-120 that will cover Mars at opposition. But what we want to know is how are these numbers affected as the distance between Earth and Mars increases since we're past the, the ideal opposition time as we stand here today. Well, again, keeping with our simple model, we know that the Earth goes around the Sun in 365 days, so that tells us the rate of motion around the uh, the sun for the earth the uh, mars has an orbital period of about 687 days so that gives us that period so as time goes by we're going to be moving a bit faster and getting out further ahead of mars as it lags on behind but the distance between earth and mars is increasing from the minimum of 62 million kilometers here to some larger uh, distance 
that is dependent on the amount of elapsed time. And so the question is, is it still worth trying to image Mars five days after opposition? Uh, can I wait 30 days after opposition? What we have here along the horizontal axis are the days before and after opposition. So zero represents October 13th, which is opposition when opposition occurred. The relative pixel count is represented here on the vertical axis. And for uh, the pixels across the width of Mars, the diameter, you would look at the red curve. And so you can see we have the maximum number of pixels across the diameter as of October 13th, and then it falls off as the Earth moves away from Mars, moving along its orbital path. And then, of course, if we're interested in the number of pixels that we can actually get a piece of Mars in, that's the blue line here. Right now, we are at this first, roughly at this first tick mark, so we are well up in here near this peak. But if you wait two weeks, say around October 27th, or if you got started two weeks early, then you still have about 90% of your pixels. So 90% of those 14,000 pixels are still got a piece of Mars in them. 10% of those pixels now are looking at space, empty space, if you wait two weeks. Now, if you wait till December, roughly six weeks away, then you would have lost 50% of your pixels. 7,000 of my imaging pixels, by the time December rolls around, will have empty space in them instead of Mars if you wait that long. So things are changing fairly rapidly here, which means if you're interested in getting out there and getting a picture of Mars, this is the time to do it where you can maximize the resolution of your camera. So yeah, what do we take away from this? Well, yeah, Mars opposition is a big deal if you want to maximize the number of pixels in your imaging camera with a piece of Mars in it. Uh, you can still get 90% of the imaging benefit of opposition within about two weeks, plus or minus, of the opposition date. So it's not that critical, but you do need to act fairly quickly because if you wait more than six weeks, then you've lost more than 50% of your imaging pixels. If you miss the 2020 opposition, well, you can just wait another 26 months or so and try again. But keep in mind, opposition distances do vary, and the 2020 distance is maybe not the shortest, but it's pretty short. It's a good opposition distance. So for you planetary hunters out there, get out there with your high magnification telescopes and fill up those pixels because they're, they're falling off the board pretty quick. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got. Just a little quick hit on Mars. Clear skies. Oh, by the way, in the time you were watching this video, you just lost two pixels. See ya.